Well, welcome to Discovering Christ. We're so glad that you can all be with us. And uh, this is a time that we're looking forward to where we have a meal together like we experienced already. We have an opportunity to hear a teaching that we hope will be relevant to you personally, not just sort of pie in the sky kind of thing, but something that really is relevant to you personally. And then third, we really do want to have an opportunity where you can sit with other people and just talk about what you think and feel about the topic that you heard that, that session. So that's the orientation of uh, the, whole, the whole course. And um, tonight I want to talk about the question of the meaning of your life. And I want to start by telling you a story uh, about how things were created. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the dog first. And he made the dog, and he said, Dog, the meaning of your life is that I want you to sit at your house, and I want you to bark at everybody who walks by and anybody who comes up to your house. And for this purpose, I will give you a lifespan of 20 years. And the dog said, Oh, Lord, could I keep 10 years and give you back 10? It's such a long time to be barking at people. And the Lord agreed. <laughs> Next, the Lord made the monkey. And he said, monkey, for your purpose in life, I want you to entertain people. I want you to do tricks and make people laugh. And for your lifespan, I'm going to give you 20 years. And the monkey, like the dog, said, oh my goodness, what a gig. 20 years of trying to entertain people. Lord, could I keep 10 and give you back 10? The Lord agreed. Next, the Lord created the cow. It's interesting, the order, isn't it? The way things were developed. <clears throat> he created the cow and he said, I want you to go out into the pastures and labor under the hot sun with the farmer. I want you to eat grass, produce milk for his family, and have, have calves. For this, I will give you a lifespan of 60 years. The, lo the, the cow said, <laughs> Lord, please, no way. He said, for that kind of purpose and that lifespan, couldn't it be 20 years and I'll give you back 40? And the Lord agreed. Then the Lord made humanity. And he said to the man, I want you to have a life where you eat, sleep, play, enjoy life, marry, learn to love one another, have a good life of purpose and peace. And for this, I'm going to give you 20 years of life. And the man said, 20 years, that's it? How about I take the 10 years back that the dog gave you back, the 10 years the monkey gave you back, and the 40 years that the cow gave you back, that would come up to a total of 80 years. And the Lord agreed. And that's why for the first 20 years of our life, we eat, sleep, and play. For the next 40 years, we work hard to toil and labor for our families and for ourselves. For the next 10 years, we do monkey tricks for the grandchildren. <laughs> and for the last 10 years of our life, we sit on the front porch and bark at everyone. <laughs> it's a funny, absurd story um, that has elements of truth in it, and certainly those of us who've passed through some of the phases of life know the truth and how amusing uh, those points are. But I use it as a beginning to sort of jump into the much more serious question of why are we here? What are we doing here? What's, what's my life intended to be about? Is there life after death? How do I find true fulfillment? and happiness in life. And we want to be able to take time to explore that question about the meaning of life this evening and really throughout uh, the Discovering Christ course. We want to have the time to reflect and think about what is the meaning of our lives. Recently we are in New York City and we did interviews with a number of people there asking the simple question, what is the meaning of life? And I'd like to take time now to show you those interviews. Um, 
Well, I can't find one. I don't know. I never thought about. I really don't know. Sometimes I, I think maybe it's to, to, to get it right. I think it's very fluid, but I think the purpose of life basically is to contribute to society in the best way you know how. Raise a family, have grandchildren. To make the planet a better place than it was previously. Connect with something that's bigger than yourself. To glorify God on a daily basis and to essentially work to um, kind of become our best selves that we can and fulfill that potential that God gave us when he created us. For one, to be happy and to and to make happy the people you have around and to tell them how much you love them. Maybe just helping another person. If I can help one other life, then that would fulfill my purpose. My belief is that I was created to worship Allah, or if that's the Arabic word for God. To live like a good life and just leave with some sort of mark on history and just have somebody remember me. Do our best to get to heaven is bring as many people as we can with us. Pursuing what you really want to do. There's not really a specified meaning or a specified purpose. I guess that everyone comes up with that for themselves. So you see, you get these wildly diverse kind of answers to the question. Some of them are unreasoned, uh, sort of random, right off the top of your head kind of uh, answers to the question. Some of them have some real meaning to them, uh, but really aren't uh, thought through fully. And then there's others that you would have seen there where people have some real genuine conviction about what it is to live life and what is the meaning of life. It's not an easy question to answer, for sure. But it's such a crucial question to answer. And the sooner we, we answer it, the better in terms of our life. Because we want to be able to make an aim with focus and with purpose. And so we want to be able to take time to think about what is the meaning of my life. For most of us, the reality is nowadays that the purpose of life lurks below the surface of super busy lives. That's just the reality of how things go. And it takes something to pop it up, to bring it up to the surface. Just some examples. For some of us, it's a joyous occasion, like it might be the birth of a child. Uh, it might be a wedding, uh, your wedding, or uh, your child's wedding. Uh, it could be some per person that you know that you can just tell they're, they're oriented, they're sort of fixed, they have happiness in their life, and they're, they're purpose-driven in the way that they live their life. But it can also be larger world events than just interactions with family or friends. For example, it can be natural disasters. It might be a wildfire, or earthquake, or a flood that impacts us directly, or perhaps family members or friends experience that disaster of everything being taken away from them. Could be a national uh, catastrophe like the many terrorist uh, acts that we've seen o over the years, where suddenly people's lives are wickedly taken away from them in a moment. Those kind of events cause us to stop and to think, what's going on? What, what's life about? Why has this happened? 